Okay, thank you. We can start. So, good evening again. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar about uh, Simulia Structure Simulation Engineer. I'm your host for today. I'm Alessandro Bellini, uh, Senior Technical Territory Technical Manager for Euromed. Euromed means uh, Italy, Balkans, Turkey, and uh, Israel as well. And uh, also, I'm the simulation specialist for the same territory. So, uh, we will be using uh, the uh, GoToWebinar platform so you can uh, uh, input the question as, uh, as you like, as uh, immediately as you have. And uh, of course, the webinar is being recorded, so you will receive uh, a link in a couple of days to, to review it uh, uh, if you can't hear me well or, or uh, if you have some problem during the way. So let's start uh, talking about uh, the uh, market trends in use of simulation. So generally, uh, we are seeing that um, from customer point of view, um, most of you are requesting uh, uh, a lot of uh, complex uh, simulation stuff. So uh, we are seeing that uh, in the future, we will, uh, uh, the, the company will uh, rely more and more on, uh, on simulation uh, uh, rather than prototype, physical prototyping. Of course, uh, the time to solution uh, has to go down because uh, uh, otherwise it will be impossible to do uh, such complex uh, analysis. So this is in order to accelerate the product development, in order to reduce cost and time for physical prototyping, and of course, to make informed decisions. So uh, speaking about the needs, so about from, from the trends that we saw, the physics capabilities required are more and more complex every day and on a larger scale. Uh, computer resources are much uh, of, a, of attention right now because uh, we need faster and remote computing to do this uh, such uh, such complex uh, simulations. Also, access and flexibility is required because uh, nowadays we are uh, switching to a model that is, uh, let's say, what I need when I need. So, uh, if I need that feature, that function, that uh, that app, uh, I want it uh, uh, just to pay for the use and not uh, not uh, let's say in a perpetual license. And of course, the ease of use and sharing, sharing with colleagues, sharing with the customers, with clients and so on. So the knowledge has to be uh, in the platform, let's say in, uh, uh, in the environment, in the database, uh, and they have to be shared uh, which, uh, with, with uh, all the stakeholders. To do so, our uh, um, proposal is about the 3D experience values. So the cloud platform of uh, the system. So we are talking about uh, Simulia technology. In this case, uh, Abacus. Abacus is the, uh, the leader in the market about nonlinear uh, uh, analysis and multiphysics. We are talking about high performance uh, computing, so cloud computing, to have uh, uh, easier the access to more CPU cores than the local machine. So in this case, uh, cloud computing is also um, the doing the something very critical. And uh, we are switching to a subscription model. So the subscription model right now is something more flexible. So you can pay, you can access to what you need, uh, when you need, and just only that. Also, we, talk, uh, we, uh, we thought about uh, an integrated workflow with the SOLIDWORKS, of course, uh, to expand the SOLIDWORKS uh, uh, features and functions. And uh, of course, you can easily collaborate using the web, uh, using the cloud. So in this sense, uh, it's just something inside the, 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 the 3D experience platform. So we are trying to expand soil simulation. Uh, in fact, uh, we are going from uh, simple physics that we can analyze in soil simulation to complex physics uh, in uh, Simulia applications. And we are starting from a structural simulation engineer. So basically, as we saw uh, on the, the 3D experience platform, that is the cloud platform of the system. So um, at this point, I would like to have uh, just some feedback from you. So if uh, in your company you're using physical prototype for evaluating product's performance, just uh, uh, respond. 
okay, to the poll. And after that, uh, I will share the results uh, with you, of course. So please uh, respond. Some other seconds. <coughs> Okay. Okay, I can close the survey, the poll, and I, I will share the results. So, 86% uh, of you are not using physical prototypes, so a very, very large number. Also, I'm asking to you, um, if you are already using simulation software, uh, either solid simulation of law or other simulation software, so please uh, answer also to the survey. Okay. Some other seconds. Okay, and I will share this, of course. So basically, 63% of you are using already SOLIDWORKS products for uh, simulation stuff, uh, and uh, the other are not using or are using other software as well. Okay, so let's uh, go on. So now we are talking about uh, uh, the capabilities of the structural simulation engineer. So first of all, the, it's powerful. Uh, the the engine uh, uh, under the hood uh, it's uh, proven, it's robust, it's uh, abacus. So uh, it's a well uh, well known uh, engine in in the world. Advanced contact meshing and material molders. Advanced ma material molders are the best uh, uh, in uh, the FEA technology and market. We will see something about that in a, in a moment. It's integrated uh, with the SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we uh, engineered uh, basically a connector, we will see in a moment, uh, that uh, it's uh, transferring, transferring automatically all the uh, stuff, all the boundary condition features, models, uh, materials from SOLIDWORKS simulation to structure simulation engineer. So it's uh, well integrated with our beloved SOLIDWORKS. It's cloud-based, so it's a cloud solution. Uh, can you give the, uh, um, can can give it to you uh, the power of the cloud? That is meaning uh, basically uh, the access to cloud computing, the access to the web platform. So, for example, you can share all the results of the simulation uh, with any device on uh, just on the browser. So, with uh, all the smartphone, all the tablets. So you can easily share your results uh, with your colleagues and customers. Speaking about the workflow that we intended uh, to integrate with simulation, and we already uh, uh, had some proofs by the customer that have already used a structural simulation engineer, we intend to do, do this kind of thing. So um, you are starting from uh, soil simulation, uh, it's not mandatory, but uh, it's a good start because uh, basically you already uh, used simulation. And uh, if you need uh, for, for a non-linear problem, very complex uh, problem, uh, basically uh, you can encounter also some, uh, some issue. Like, for example, the simulation is not uh, uh, completing the, the run uh, or uh, it's too complex for, uh, for handling in simulation. So from this point of view, you can use the simulation connector that is called. With just one click, you can uh, uh, transfer automatically all the, the condition, all the geometry and materials uh, to, the, to the simulia structure simulation engineer. So in this way, you have the confidence uh, with the robustness of uh, the Abacus solver uh, to get the convergence at 100%. After that, if you want to make some changes in the de to design, you can do it in SOLIDWORKS, and with just a click with the SOLIDWORKS update button, 
you can uh, just rerun the simulation. So very, very easy workflow and integrate with the SOLIDWORKS simulation. So you can make an uh, informed decision, uh, uh, let's say, in a very short time. Powerful and accurate, uh, we already said, it's, uh, it's Abacus, it's the best uh, on the market about non-linear uh, analysis. In uh, structural simulation engineer, we are focusing on static analysis, so non-linear static analysis. And uh, of course, we can handle multiple non-linear effects, uh, multiple different materials like, uh, for example, rubber and uh, steel or aluminium, or uh, we can handle multiple contacts uh, at once, uh, large deformation. We will see something in a moment with uh, the case studies. Uh, we have, a core, of course, a wide library of complex materials. You can also transfer the material from solid simulation and uh, from materiality if you are using it. So, very interesting. And uh, let's say it's ideal for uh, some industrial workflows, sealing pressure, rubber bashing, uh, rubber, steel rubber joints, uh, or preloaded -volt, pre bolted connections, and so on. There is a lot of stuff uh, uh, you can analyze with SSE. So let's talk about one of the best features that we have in uh, uh, structural simulation engineer that is called general content. Um, as you know, if you use a solid simulation, when you are dealing with uh, the contact between surfaces, you need uh, manual input. You need to identify each uh, contact pair manually uh, that occurs uh, in the simulation before the run, of course. So it's a tedious task. It's, the, it's a trial and error task. So basically, uh, can get you a lot of time. And, and, can, can you, you can waste a lot of time because it, maybe you are just you have just to run uh, the analysis to see that uh, there are contact missing so you have to stop uh, and rerun the analysis so it's a very tedious uh, uh, workflow instead in uh, structural simulation engineer we have uh, just uh, one feature that is called general contact that detects automatically all the interactions between parts faces and so on. Very, very ingenious, very, very nice. So basically, it's one feature, one function for all this stuff. It's uh, comprising also self-contact and sliding contact, so also friction, and uh, can handle automatically, I'm, I repeat, uh, multiple complex contacts and friction. Very, very handy. And you will see in a moment with the case studies. Also, we are performing uh, uh, meshing, uh, very advanced meshing tools like uh, the real based meshing or the brick and echo and quad meshing, so hex meshing. For example, real based mean it's a, a, it's a new thing uh, uh, respect to simulation, means that you can define for uh, some uh, uh, for certain geometry, you can define rules to apply mesh and the one, one the, the mesh is applied, for example, for a specific thickness or specific features, if there, is, there are holes or some, some other features, you can have a, a rule and uh, automatically all the parts uh, that, uh, that goes uh, with this rule can be meshed and, 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 uh, and uh, they are saved uh, into the database. So basically that, that is mean that uh, you don't need to remesh those parts uh, uh, each time you are analyzing that. So unlike uh, simulation, uh, Basically, you can do mesh just one, uh, one time for a component, and you will have that mesh uh, forever in your database. So really, really powerful feature that uh, now it's, uh, it's performing uh, in, uh, in the 3 experience. Also, we can have uh, hex mesh, so uh, on brick and quad and so on, and you will see the precision of the hex mesh. And this new feature that is called continuum shell element that are uh, basically shell, shells, uh, shell mesh, but uh, with a 3D thickness. So you can see also, you can plot really the thickness. And uh, after the simulation, you can get the, the real uh, thickness on the part. Very, very interesting uh, uh, in a situation like this, uh, this part that is uh, uh, hydroforged, for example. 
and much more uh, that we don't have time right now to, to dig into. Cloud-based. Cloud-based uh, means that, uh, of course, uh, you can run uh, your analysis locally. That's it's normal. But uh, you can also have uh, the, uh, uh, the option, the additional uh, feature to run on the cloud. Uh, to run on the cloud, you, you will need the credits. Uh, in the, uh, if you want to understand better, you can write to me uh, later. Um, but basically, credits uh, are uh, the way to use uh, the power of the cloud uh, up to 32 cores uh, for each run. Very, very handy. And of course, uh, if you run on the cloud, uh, your local machine is free to do anything else. So very, very simple approach and very, very handy. Collaboration, of course, it's embedded because we are talking about a cloud-based uh, cloud platform. So basically, you can share immediately whichever your your, your results uh, you want uh, on tablet, on smartphones, because you are already on the platform, so you can access them on the, on a web uh, browser. Also, we are talking about cloud, so we are talking about security. Why is that? Because uh, it's important. Uh, I know that uh, many uh, companies have uh, objections, have uh, concerns about cloud security, and we recently passed uh, a lot of certification for doing that. So uh, for each segment of cloud, so software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, there are a specific uh, certification that the so system has passed, uh, and uh, you can uh, access to the uh, reference here on, the, on the, the web link provided. So this is, uh, this is meaning very important, uh, very, uh, let's say, reliable um, partner that we are uh, for, uh, for the cloud. So now let's talk about the interesting part about uh, analysis. So we will uh, see some case study on SSE and the comparison with simulation. We will talk about plasticity with the, uh, this kind of uh, bending machine, let's say. Uh, so we will see in a moment uh, how to replicate this analysis and how, let's say, uh, to compare the analysis between SSE and simulation. Also, we will talk about the post backing that is about uh, the behavior of, uh, let's say, the instability in this kind of situation, when you have uh, the failure, not because of the material, but because of the geometry that is uh, uh, due to the uh, compressor, compressive load that is applied. And uh, the post-buckling phase is uh, after the first buckling is very, very complex and very, very um, nonlinear stuff, because uh, as you can see in the image, uh, in, the, in the video, the post buckling uh, is uh, um, happening in a very, very short time, in milliseconds. So it's very complex stuff to analyze. So let's jump uh, uh, on plasticity case study. So we will start with soil simulation. Of course, we have used the simulation premium in this case for nonlinear. We have defined multiple contexts that have to be defined manually, we see uh, with the software. Also, we can only use uh, tetraedical mesh, tetra mesh, so uh, octet mesh, if you like. So we are bound uh, to this kind of element that are, are good, but uh, uh, let's say in terms of, uh, of speed, uh, they lack, lack speed. So uh, it's not a good compromise. High sensitivity of the mesh because in the contact zone, you need a, a very refined mesh. And if you don't have uh, the, the, the issue that you can uh, face is the fact that uh, the run uh, is, uh, stop, uh, is stopping. So you need uh, experience to the that. Uh, you need a trial and error to, under to understand uh, which are the zone uh, in contact, uh, when, uh, where to define, how to refine, and so on. Also, we can apply variable load, as uh, you can see in, uh, in the picture. Uh, we are applying the rotation, and then we are uh, turning back the rotation only with these curves. So 
it's a specific uh, uh, task you you have to do in this way and uh, it's a little bit complicated also for all these kind of things uh, you have a long setup time and run we will see so uh, excuse me for the, the italian because it was uh, a an interview that uh, uh, I, chat, I, I faced with my colleague, so the, the video is in Italian, but I can, of course, I can explain it. So we have this uh, uh, drum uh, uh, component that is rolling the profile. The profile is in uh, carbon steel. And uh, of course, we are uh, splitting in half uh, the model because we are using uh, the symmetry. So we have applied alloy steel to the drum uh, to the, the let's say blocking part and uh, only to the profile we have applied the plasticity so in this case uh, we have used the so-called stress strain curve so in this case uh, only the profile part uh, is uh, analyzed with a non-linear material with this kind of uh, uh, information context of course, uh, we have to use uh, a bonded contact to block the profile, and then we have uh, a no penetration contact uh, on those surfaces. So again, as uh, we said, uh, we have to define it uh, them uh, uh, before the analysis, and you have to do to do it in uh, the right way. Sometimes you have, uh, let's say, many times uh, actually, you have to return back and to redefine. Also, we have a rotation imposed to the axis of the drum uh, part uh, is uh, um, 180 uh, degrees of rotation, so 3.14 uh, 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 radians. And uh, we have applied a curve, so in a moment you will see the curve applied, to, uh, to go back uh, from the first rotation. So it's, uh, you can see it's uh, something not so easy to do, but uh, in the end, it's the only way in uh, simulation. So we, you have to apply this curve, you have to input all these points manually to define uh, how it's uh, variable, uh, the, the load, in this case, the rotation. And then we have applied uh, the symmetry, of course. This is a very simple task. And a fixer on, uh, on the block. So let's talk about the mesh. Of course, uh, if uh, you have experience, you know how to use uh, a mesh control and you have to refine uh, those uh, uh, components that are performing, let's say, the nonlinear stuff. So um, also in uh, the nonlinear uh, settings, you have to uh, review also maybe many times uh, to review the regulation, to the, 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 all the settings, uh, to perform uh, correcting the analysis. So in this case, uh, um, large displacement and large deformation, and we, we use the Intel Direct Pass. So let's check the results. Uh, but before uh, this, uh, we would like to see how much time we spent. Uh, and you can see also uh, there are some trouble for the, the solver. And we uh, perform the solution in three hours and a half. And this is just the la last run. But uh, in this case, uh, I was uh, performing uh, five, six times uh, this task because uh, it was really, really complex to, to get the final results. So imagine one day of, uh, of work uh, on simulation premium. And in the end, uh, uh, I, can, can, I, can, I can show you the nice uh, results uh, in a moment. Okay, so let's say after one, uh, one day of work, we can review the results. Uh, you can see, for example, the stresses that uh, are uh, really nice. You can see the zones that are plasticizing the outer and the inner radius of the profile. Of course, you can see the elastic uh, return of the profile, so you can understand which is the uh, final angle that you can get with this kind of bending machine. And also we can see the deformation, the plastic deformation that it's occurring again in the outer and inner radius uh, zone of the profile. 
So those are good results, uh, not so refined, but let's say it's, uh, it's uh, something useful. So now let's see this, the same case uh, with structural simulation engineer. So here we can just handle all the contacts with the general contact feature. Very, very handy, we will see in a moment. We can mix uh, the mesh uh, with Tetra, with Tet and X. It's not a problem. So some components can, uh, can be meshed uh, with the hex, uh, with brick, uh, and some other with the tetraedro. So very, very handy feature. So you can decide uh, and uh, you can mix these kind of things. Also, we can get uh, high precision just uh, with the full dimension. We, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we haven't applied any uh, local mesh. So this is a very, very interesting feature. And the multi-step approach uh, for, uh, for the variable load. The, the multi-step approach uh, means that uh, you can define, let's say, sub-step of analysis. And for example, for the bending machine, you can just uh, say that in the first step, uh, you want to um, rotate 180 degrees. And the second step, you can revert it back, just like that. With, with no curves, so you don't have to input any points or curves whatsoever. So in this case, uh, the setup time and the run uh, was very, very fast. So let's open uh, uh, Structure Simulation Engineer. We can open the SOLIDWORKS part. Uh, we could do also with the simulation connector, but I did this uh, just to show the entire workflow. So with the mesh, uh, we can just use the sweep mesh and you can define it uh, automatically just clicking on the component and the mesh itself is defining automatically which is the starting and, and, and uh, surface mesh. Here we are using also the second order uh, tech mesh with just the standard uh, dimension. Now we are defining uh, those contact, uh, those bonded contact uh, that is, uh, let's say, simulating the, uh, the force that is needed to, to retain the profile. And that's it, basically. We will see in a moment also the general contact. Now we are defining the plasticity for all materials, not just for the profile itself. Here I can add, that, uh, can add a hinge and then I've applied a rotation, very simple. I can uh, uh, easily uh, select the point the, the, of the drum, the, the center point of the drum and rotate it uh, 180 degrees. Then, I can just define, uh, as I said, uh, the two steps. One is the bending. So I can just define the initial time increment and the maximum time increment. And now I can redefine the second step, that is the, the turning back. So in this case, uh, I have just, uh, with just two steps, uh, I have uh, enough information uh, to, to go for the analysis instead of uh, inputting a lot of other data with the curves. Now for the general contact. Uh, as I said, I've uh, pointed out that uh, with just one click, I can define tangential behavior. I can define normal behavior with just the default settings. And that's it. This is the way to define the contact all over the simulation, all over the surfaces, all over the components. And then I can run. So very, very, beautiful stuff so now i've run on the on the cloud and uh, after the run i can of course review the results in terms of displacement stress and so on here we are viewing the displacement now we will see also the plastic strain and you can see from here that the, the, the information are very very similar from uh, simulation premium but very very refined with just the normal mesh with the X uh, standard mesh. This is the actually yielding uh, portion. So the real time yielding portion of the component. Or for example, we can see the pressure contact. So here are also very handy stuff that we can use, for example, to understand uh, which is the load on the axle of the, the engine, the motor. Very, very interesting. So as a comparison, it, this, this setup uh, in simulation premium was very complex, many hours and uh, runs. 
Instead, uh, in simulation engineer was some minutes, you, ha you have seen the real setup, and only one run. That is really amazing, only one run to complete analysis. So in the end, the mesh uh, in simulation only Tetra, but uh, in SSE, we have the mixed mesh approach, so X plus TET and so on, precision and speed at the same time. So precision was good uh, also on simulation premium after many hours, so 3.5 hours uh, for this, the last run after several runs. So let's say the reality was one day of work. In uh, simulation engineer was just uh, 40 minutes uh, at the first run. I'm not joking. In uh, less than one hour, I was able to reproduce uh, the entire analysis. Very, very amazing. So let's talk now, now about uh, the post buckling uh, And um, I'm showing here, I don't know if you know Mythbusters, it's just uh, a, an old uh, episode uh, of Mythbusters. It's nice, uh, it's handy because um, they also show how much uh, the pressure applied. Uh, uh, also, they, they, tell, they told uh, how much is the thickness. So they gave a lot of information. So I, I tried to replicate uh, this kind of thing. Here in simulation premium, we have applied the force again with the, uh, with the curve over time. We could use only the shell mesh with triangles of the second order, first or, or, or second order. And the deformation uh, uh, were out of control after the first buckling point. Why is that? Because, uh, as I said, the, the, the buckling is... is uh, it's a very high speed uh, process. So after the first backing point, uh, you have uh, really milliseconds uh, in which uh, the deformation are going very, very large. So um, from nonlinear static approach, uh, this is uh, produce a very instability. It's a very complex stuff to analyze. So the deformation are not in control and we don't have any other meaning to control the simulation. It's a tedious process because uh, I'd uh, perform a lot of trial and error to uh, finalize the simulation. And uh, I didn't have uh, a final result because basically after many trials, many, many trials, I reached just 50% of the load. So we can see in simulation, this is the geometry. Uh, on the base, I have an immovable um, boundary condition that is uh, mimicking the, the bogey on the rail, uh, railway car. On the top, uh, if you saw the episode, uh, there is uh, a, a very weight, a very high weight that in the first uh, increment, you can see the curve uh, is uh, drop on the, on the tank and then uh, the applied uh, pressure for, for the buckling. So the, the drop of the weight was intended to just to indent uh, to, to the first, uh, for the first uh, uh, indentation of uh, uh, the, the railway car. This is the mesh, so it's a shell mesh, not very refined. And uh, I got to use this because um, basically I didn't want to uh, I, I want to, to save some time because uh, every run was about uh, 35 minutes. So I was uh, searching something, uh, uh, let's say, in the first place uh, with the first order, and then I, I got uh, the second order for the final run. And still, uh, also with the second order and then the refined mesh, uh, I didn't have uh, uh, final results. So I blocked, uh, I stick to 53%, uh, uh, you can see from the time moment. Uh, so I did have uh, the final results, but only at 50%, approximately the 50% of the load. So it's a good simulation. I can see the nonlinear uh, behavior. I can see where is occurring the buckling and when is occurring the buckling, but, uh, but I can't see farther in the buckling. So if I need some more behaviors, if, if I want to dig into more details on this case, uh, I, I didn't uh, find uh, other results. 
let's see in action a structure simulation engineer on this case. So here, the multi-step approach uh, with, was very, very easy to apply. So the force, the force uh, applied on the top was just on and off, uh, and uh, then the pressure was just uh, very easy to define which step uh, uh, would apply which force. The mesh shell was uh, quad dominant. You can use uh, quad dominant or quad only. I used quad only, that is better. Uh, for those of you that doesn't know, quad, uh, it's, uh, let's say, a quadrangular, let's say, four, four uh, uh, elements in, uh, four, sorry, four nodes in the element. It's uh, like the X mesh uh, and the brick mesh in, in 3D. And uh, dominant means that uh, sometimes can be filled also with that. Quad only means it's better because it means that uh, it's only comprising with quad uh, uh, elements. Large deformation were under control because basically we have uh, the stabilization control in the solver. So here I have uh, realized uh, uh, after the first round that uh, was uh, uh, in the same way as the simulation was uh, blocked at uh, 50%, was stopped at 50%, I realized that I, I could use the stabilization and the stabilization helped me to get the, the final results. So I reached, uh, with the faster setup and run, I reached 90-80% of the load, very, very heavy. So here in Structure Simulation Engineer, let's see, uh, first of all, the mesh. It's, uh, again, it's a surface quad, as I said. So you can see also, I can, I could start from the beginning uh, with the refined mesh. So I can show it in a moment. So you can see that I refine it uh, in the outer uh, diameter near the end. So it's very well meshed, very, very good, uh, good mesh with quad only. Very interesting uh, uh, meshing technology. So also with the uh, uh, local refinement. Uh, also here, let's uh, go on, okay. The boundary conditions are really the same. So you can see the um, applied fixed displacement on the, on the, let's say, the bogey where or on the surface, on the edges that are uh, uh, based on the bogeys. Also, you can see the uh, loads on the top, but uh, also it's, it, it's, it's very interesting, the approach of static steps. So you can see in the first step, I didn't apply the pressure and then I can just apply it the pressure. So very, very handy because uh, it's very easy to define uh, which step uh, and uh, which pressure or which condition you want to apply. Also, you have a, a scale factor, so you don't need any curve, you don't need any uh, tedious uh, input to, to do. So let's see also the results. And here you can see really the, the power of uh, Abacus uh, and of simulation engineer, of structural simulation engineer. So you can see really that we analyzed uh, entirely the post buckling behavior. So in the right uh, panel, you can choose uh, from uh, uh, each step that are calculated in the simulation. We can see, of course, the displacement, the stress. Let's go on. Uh, okay. Also, of course, you can uh, um, perform uh, an animation. You can export the animation. Also, here you can see the behavior very, very similar uh, to the picture the video, also in the back. So you can see, um, of course, this is happening in a very, very short time. So in the, in the simulation, there are several steps, but uh, in real time, there are very, very milliseconds, let's say. So you can see also on the back, uh, very similar to what you saw in, uh, in the video. Very impressive. So also, I can uh, overlap uh, the mesh. 
so I can so also view the mesh uh, if it's uh, correct or not, if it's uh, if it has to be to be refined or not. So you can see just the initial mesh was uh, was really good for the results. Of course, I can refine it, uh, but I think it's just a really good uh, results uh, from the beginning. And this is, was the second run, just the second run. So to summarize. Here, uh, the setup uh, in simulation and in SSE was very, uh, what was, uh, let's say, in, in a few minutes uh, was completed. But uh, in simulation, we, we did uh, many runs because uh, uh, each run uh, it stopped to 50% or less, even less. In, from the mesh point of view, we, we could use uh, only triangles in simulation premium, but also quad dominant and quad only in uh, structural simulation engineer. The precision was very good, uh, let's say, also in simulation for, uh, for uh, let's say, the, uh, the calculated steps was good in uh, 35 minutes. With a higher uh, order, of course, uh, uh, it took longer, but basically it, uh, it stops uh, uh, again at 50% of the load. And in simulation engineer, after two hours at the second run, I was able to, co to complete uh, this kind of thing. So very, very amazing also in the, this kind of stuff. Also, just as a bonus uh, case study, uh, I performed an analysis on Hyperform. Hyperform is a, a very complex material model. It's like hyper, hyper elastic, but uh, it's used uh, with the higher compression behavior materials. So like, uh, for example, the foam rubber, polyurethane, latex, and so on. And this is uh, specifically uh, exclusive for simulation engineer. So we don't have this kind of material model inside the simulation premium. We have a hyperelastic model, but not hyperform. So we are going to see large deformation, large displacement. And uh, one of the points here, because of the, the materials, is the use uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, um, cushions, mattresses, chairs, sofas. So I want to see contact pressures on, for example, human body. So in this case, uh, I can show to you in uh, Structure Simulation Engineer, this is the hyperform formulation. Of course, you need uh, to have this kind of uh, constants for the model and the setup was very very simple so we can see the results and uh, imagine uh, uh, here we didn't apply any contact pair it's just the general contact and with just one thing function one feature you can take into account all these kind of complex contacts you can see the, the development of contacts in the simulation sliding on the bottom uh, part uh, and so on. Very, very powerful. So I'm uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, so I will invite you to uh, get more information from uh, soywords.com slash SSE website uh, if you want. Uh, and I would like to run uh, this kind of uh, survey, final surveys. Uh, so I'm uh, interested in which of which is the interest of the webinar uh, that you saw. Please uh, give me your feedback. Some other seconds to vote. And of course, I will share the results with you. OK, perfect. Almost everybody. OK, so. I thank you very much for the high uh, interest shown. OK, also, I'm uh, asking if you want more information about Simulia Structure Simulation Engineer. Please answer. And by the way, uh, I suggest uh, you to revise the, um, uh, the option. If you select uh, no for the uh, marketing uh, communication, you need uh, 
to resend me um, an email because otherwise I cannot uh, contact you. So please remember what you selected. Okay, I will uh, share also this. So I'm very pleased. Almost everybody want more information. Thank you very much for the feedback. So I'm at the end. I am uh, uh, here. I have uh, my references. If you want, you can write to me. Uh, you can also visit my YouTube channel, uh, Alessandro Bellini SolidWorks. It's very simple to to find me. And now I will uh, try to respond to the questions. Uh, okay. So you can input the question uh, as uh, as you want in the in the GoToMeeting panel, in the GoToWebinar panel. So for the moment, uh, there are no questions. Unfortunately, you can't, uh, you can't talk uh, with GoToWebinar. You can write down uh, your uh, questions. I will wait uh, some other moments. In the meanwhile, uh, I would like to uh, repeat that uh, uh, structure simulation engineer is in, is on the cloud on the platform that is 3d experience platform and uh, each uh, solidworks customer that is in maintenance in, in subscription will uh, can can request uh, one access one base access it's called uh, social collaboration services uh, so you can ask to your reseller to to get uh, uh, this kind of license on the platform that is free. It's free for, again, every uh, SOLIDWORKS customer in uh, uh, subscription. So one uh, SOLIDWORKS, uh, for example, standard in subscription means one SES uh, um, access to the platform, social collaboration services. I've already done a webinar with my colleague uh, Tornin Casa. There, uh, there will be another one specifically on this argument. Okay, um, can be used into analysis as airflow in vacuum system. Not at the moment. We are talking about just nonlinear static analysis. Uh, of course, if you want to apply pressure, so we are talking about structural analysis. Of course, you can do it. It's a nonlinear static analysis. Uh, we cannot uh, use it for CFD at the moment. Okay. So again, it's a nonlinear static analysis approach. Okay, so I don't see any any other questions. Ah, okay, e transfer. Yes, uh, we can analyze e transfer. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, so much time to do that. But uh, in the module, in uh, sorry, in the app, uh, there is a module for the heat transfer and also for. Uh, uh, thermo and structural uh, coupled simulation okay so you can do let's say the same thing uh, as in simulation you can uh, um, analyze the heat transfer and then transfer to the st structural analysis to see the deformation due to the thermal effects okay any other question Okay, so uh, this is the end. So basically, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for the for your attendance. And uh, again, uh, you can write me if you have uh, if you need more information about uh, SSE, about the experience, and so on. So good evening, everyone. Uh, last time, bye bye.